everyone. My name is Elman, and uh, I'm from Azerbaijan. Everyone familiar with Azerbaijan? Yes? No? 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 Doesn't really matter, because today I'm going to talk entirely different subject, something I have a great passion for, and something I'm sure you know about a lot, Turkmenistan. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. But I am going to talk about the world politics world affairs, and because it is so intertwined with politics, both internal and uh, external, I'm going to talk about politics. And no matter how cynical we are about it, I do believe that along with the scientific revolution, politics is what defines our society, what shapes it, it and how it influences individuals, and it derives passion. Passion in masses more than anything else. And both destructive and creative. And to see that, it's enough to look at the history of 20th century, when assassination of one prince provoked a World War I and death of 10 million people. When ignorance and uh, the choice of comfort led to the rise of Third Reich and 50 million people lost their lives. And even today, when technology and productivity are at enormous levels, Still, we lose millions of people to civil wars, to hunger, to diseases. And it is a direct result of bad politics. I truly believe that with good governance and political agreement between the elites, we can do much more to stop those problems than to spend billions of dollars through NGOs and other organizations to deal with its consequences. Obviously, one can say that you know, bad governance is an internal problem of the country where it takes place. Uh, every country deserves the government which it has. Uh, after all, when the transition towards democracy took place in the Western world, it was gradual, it was bloody, but at the same time, it was an internal process. But at the same time, it was a fair fight. It was a sword against sword, rifle against rifle, cannon against cannon, not sword against a uh, fighter jet, which, oops, apparently we sold to that government, <laughs> which of you, as totalitarian. But at the end, it is really, truly up to those people in those societies to change it. I just believe when the vast majority in the country do want change, we cannot sit aside. And speaking of that, I want to talk about the subject I've been extremely passionate about, Ukraine. Now, I know that it might seem a little far away too, but before the Flight 370 took 99% of the airtime on CNN, Ukraine was actually on the news. So let me just remind you that the country gained its independence in 1991 after the collapse of Soviet Union. And at that time, that country refused from its arsenal of nuclear weapons, which was third in the world, next only to Russia's and United States, in exchange for the guarantees to its territorial integrity. Guarantors being United States, Great Britain, and um, Russia. Uh, <clears throat> it's one of the largest countries in Europe. It has one of the largest and poorest populations. And several months ago, people in huge numbers came on the streets of the capital city of Kiev to protest against the constant corruption and cronyism and demanding tighter, closer relations with Europe. First, they were met with police batons. They suffered and they came back in even greater numbers. They were met with water cannons when the temperature was zero degrees Fahrenheit. They froze and they came in in even bigger numbers. And then they were met with snipers. They died but their passion didn't, and the government fell. And the corrupt president fled the country. People celebrated, and Russia, Russia invaded. It annexed Crimean Peninsula, effectively declaring it the part of Russian Federation, and its troops are on the border with Ukraine. So what do we do about it, and why would we even care? Well, we should care, because Never since the World War II, the annexation of territory in Europe has taken place the way it did now. We also should care because Europe, which is stable, peaceful, and slowly expanding, 
has been one of the most fundamental pillars of the modern world, which brought us unprecedented progress and prosperity. We also care because any conflict with Russia is dangerous. After all, as one of the most popular TV anchors in Russia angrily reminded us, Russia is the only country on Earth capable of wiping the United States out of the face of Earth. Now, we're not going to war with Russia over Ukraine. But what if the expansionist policies of Russia continue? As Russian President Vladimir Putin appealed to the West, uh, asking to understand the aspirations of people of Russia for historic Russia, we should keep in mind that that includes not only the whole Ukraine, it also includes Poland, Baltic countries, Finland, most of them NATO members. And unlike in the case of Ukraine, where our obligations, our guarantees were not specifically defined, we have a statutory obligation to go to war if any of those countries are attacked. Now, is that scenario likely? Probably not. But a couple of months ago, nobody would have even asked this question. And now, if nothing happens to Russia, if it doesn't pay any price for what it already did, who knows, maybe in a couple of years when things are calmer and Russia is stronger, you know, it might take next step. Now what's being discussed by Western countries is the set of sanctions uh, depending on what President Putin is going to do next. Nothing serious is imposed on Russia for what it already did. It's not because they like Putin or trust him. It's because sanctions hurt not only Russia, but also those who impose them. In this case, most of all European Union, which imports more than 30% of its natural gas from Russia. And in the world, in the Western world, where public opinion is so important in the decision-making uh, process of the policymakers, it's very difficult to adapt decisions which would hurt people's pockets. So at the end, it is our decision. Are we willing to trade our comfort now for something, for, for being better off in the longer run? And I do believe this is the question which deserves at least a study. If at the end you study it and you decide that, yes, I prefer my comfort now, fine. But please don't let a TV anchor whom you might like, or comedian, or somebody else, to decide for you by casually telling you, oh, it's not our fight, it's a family feud. Make an informative decision yourself. More than 2,000 years ago, Plato said that uh, those who are too smart for, to engage in politics are punished by being governed by those who are dumber. <laughs> Nothing has really changed. So let's get involved, guys. I want more people, smarter people, more passionate people to get active and start shaping the society in which we live for us and future generations. Thank you.